national record consisting of 28 victories without a loss, including 15 knockouts, and he has one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, from the land down under, Sydney, Australia, here is the IBF number one ranked challenger in the world, the undefeated Glenn Conga Kelly. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red with white trim, and weighing 172 pounds. He was the most outstanding boxer of the 1988 Olympics, and since turning professional, he has won four world titles, with a record that stands at 45 victories, including 36 knockouts, with only one loss by disqualification, avenged by a first-round knockout. He is universally acclaimed as the very best boxer in the world for the past decade, from Pensacola, Florida, presenting the former middleweight, former super middleweight, and two-time light heavyweight champion, the reigning, defending, undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. Everybody out, everybody out. Okay, gentlemen, I won't lie. Clean the sportsman like contest. You both know the rules. On this point to the end about you both obey my every command. I wish you both luck. Touch gloves, come out, box on the bell. What's up, boys? Coming out. Stars in the crowd as Roy Jones's extended friendships within the sports world are on display here. Barry Bonds at ringside, brand new Atlanta Brave Gary Sheffield at ringside, various uh, leading lights from the worlds of rap music and hip hop fashion and uh, music here. And there's Jeff Finnick trying to inject some fire into the heart and soul of his fighter, Glenn Kelly. At one point during his second fight with Billy Lewis, uh, Kelly's performance was so disheartening to Fennec that he left the corner and, uh, and allowed the fighter to come back to the corner between rounds without being there to talk to him. He said that got the message across. That was a very emotional fighter, fight trainer, but it also was the same way as a fighter. Hey, if Jeff were in the ring, he'd be giving up 55 pounds for Roy Jones, and you just know he'd jump in his face anyway. He would maybe be a bigger threat than Kelly is. But Will Kelly. I'd like to make a note also that Jeff Finnick has just been inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. In Canastota, yeah. New York. So this June, I will be up there to uh, welcome him. You're no doubt already a member of that Hall of Fame, Emmanuel. Yes, and I'm very excited about being up there when he gets inducted, too. Kelly backing off as Roy Jones begins the assault with straight right hands. Again, if, if you haven't seen much of Jones, clearly the most unconventional style of all current great fighters. He seldom starts his attack with the jab. He'll lead with hooks, lead with straight right hands. Sometimes he'll just jump in and immediately go to infighting because he can do that, too. Brilliant skills in every area, Manny. Yeah, the thing he's got to do is to make a faster and more consistent tempo fighting this guy. This guy likes to fight in spots, very much reluctant. And if Roy fights his normal style of laid back, it could be a boring fight. You see the size and strength of Kelly. This for Jones is like hitting a brick wall compared to some of his previous opponents. The willowy Richard Hall, for instance. Roy Jones' skill and speed would neutralize all of the supposed advantages of Kelly has. And certainly from that range, Kelly won't be able to bother him much. No, Kelly, his basic fundamentals are bad. When he misses a punch, his right leg is all up in there. And once Roy sets the tempo up a little faster, it's going to be just a matter of time. If Kelly really wanted to compete with Jones, wouldn't he, Emmanuel, have to step right up into his chest? Yes, he would, but it's not his nature. He's just the opposite of Jeff Finnish. 
mentally, physically, and talent-wise. So abundantly clear in yesterday's conversation when every time we asked Kelly about his approach to fighting Jones and what she was going to do, Fennec would answer. And eventually you said, I can see that Jeff is fired up to fight Roy. How about you, Glenn? <laughs> Dazzling speed, Roy Jones. Apex. Roy is doing just what he and I discussed earlier. To fight a guy like this, you're going to have to just fight a faster tempo because this guy is not used to not only fighting fast, he's not used to thinking fast. So just start doing a lot of different things, body movements, everything, to make him get off track and make him have to speed up his tempo, so to say. This kid fighting a totally defensive fight. He got his hands kind of high. He working your jab, changing your jab up and stuff. Mm -hmm. Hands is up high. Hands is up high. The elbow, elbow leaving that body off. Kind of sit up and get by the stuff. He bring his hands down. They got his defense high. You don't know what to do. Josh, he's doing this one. He's where he is well. Let's put him back with him. Let's push him back with the mic in feet. Okay? Don't let him just be taken. Don't let him stay in the ring and walk him, fight you and that. Put him back with Hilding Wood. Tie him up to the punch on the ropes. But then, not one punch is not enough. It's got to be in enough. bunches. Mm -hmm. It's got to be in bunches. Right here, left hook, right here. It's like a blue, blue. Let's go, Red. Get out of there. Hard right to the body by Jones. Right, get out, Blue. Get out. Get out. And uh, what was expected to be one of his most spirited challenges a few years back, Roy knocked out Virgil Hill with a vicious body shot. Who is the present WBA Cruiserweight Champion of the World? Box numbers in round one. Glenn Kelly landed one of 20 attempted punches. Jones, not much faster tempo, seven out of 34. Usually starts cautiously in round one and tries to get a look at his opponent, what he's going to do before he begins to develop more of the arsenal. And he should get right back to the attack again, regardless of whether he lands or not. title defense in Los Angeles last summer against Julio Gonzalez, who was also big for a light heavyweight. Jones knocked Gonzalez down three times in the first, fifth, and twelfth rounds. But in none of those three instances did he step in and try to finish the fight. No, he didn't. He went back into a defense mode right now. He's really trying to catch Kelly coming in with a counter left hook. We call it a check hook. And he's really waiting on him to come in where he can take that half a scoop back and shoot the hook at the same time. Doesn't look like Kelly wants to come in. No, so he's going to have to change up and take it back to him again. Roy's a very active puncher. All he has to do is just be busier, and it's just a matter of time before he'll stop it. Among the many things at which Roy is so totally adept, he faints as well as any fighter in the sport. And he can decoy you. He'll look right at the middle of your chest and hit you in the head. Right on the He'll look at your head and hit you right in the belly. He's a very exceptionally intelligent and intelligent and gifted fighter. Open up and this fight is over with. Kelly has no real defense to hold it off Roy Jones. And Roy can do so many different things. Even though Kelly's a big guy, he's too clumsy and everything he does, Roy can see it, so it's not going to be that effective anyway. <laughs> Looping uppercut. And again, the left hook. Kelly has dropped his right hand every time Jones has started with a left hook. It's just a matter of time. I think Roy's going to put on one of his better performances tonight. He's got the perfect opponent in front of him. Outer left hook, Lance Blunt. 
and Kelly is done. If you missed it, catch a replay of HBO's acclaimed documentary, Picture Perfect. Stories behind the greatest photographs in sports. This documentary takes a look back through the golden era of sports photography at some of the most compelling sports moments ever captured on film. You tighten the rubber band every time you pull a punch at him. You flinching up. Try to keep him moving back till you can get his back on the rope, okay? Get his back on the rope so you can jam him up. You understand? Then put some leather on him. Here's a look at the looping right hand, one of three punches with which Kelly appeared to stun or appeared to be stunned by Jones in round number two. There was also a left hook earlier than that and a quick left hook at the end of the round. Jones threw 69 punches in the round. That's a very high output for him. 13 out of 22 in power shots. Looks like he's a little more interested in a knockout tonight than yes. has generally been the case. I'm very impressed with Jones tonight. He's fighting a very good fight, I think. He's mixing up his attack, doing a variety of things. And Kelly is the perfect opponent for him tonight. And you heard Jeff Fennick in the corner pleading with his fighter to throw punches. So Kelly comes out and tries to attack, but as you can see, one punch at a time and slow at that. And once he, once he starts throwing punches, it's just a matter of time before he's going to get caught. The only reason he survived this long is because he hasn't been throwing punches. But he tried to throw a punch at the end of round two. Jones countered perfectly with the left hook. Speed is a big factor in this fight. Well, when Vernon Forrest fought a very fast fighter in Shane Mosley last week, he said, the way you stop speed is with the jab. But Vernon kept it working. Kelly just hadn't thrown much. No, there's no speed at all coming into Kelly. And, you know, he's trying to think and fight an intelligent fight. And, and to beat Roy Jones, you just have to be to somewhat, like, stupid and just keep punching, keep punching, keep punching. And, and even then, he's not going to improve it so much, but it's his best chance. This is exactly the opposite of what Kelly acknowledged he would have to do to be in the fight. So it's easy to talk about it. Yeah, just not very easy not to do. Not that it. easy to do, especially with a talented fighter like Roy Jones. Jones came close to showing us. He never knew where Jones was going to punch from. Jones is mixing up his attack so much. Overhand right, right into the rim. Now he created a leaping left uppercut right between the gloves. A leaping left uppercut. You wouldn't teach it either, would you? No. But he, he was studying the hand position. And he realized that every time he goes to this guy, he's putting his hands on the side. So Roy, being as smart as he is, he charged at him with a left uppercut. First knockdown of the night for Jones. And that's the most spirited effort Kelly has made to actually get at Jones. And he lands a right hand to the body. And Jones, with a right cross flex, the punch away ground to Short in green. Uh -huh. Glenn, what's the worst case scenario? Okay, well, then let's do it then. Let's go for it, son. Let's not give him a chance. Let's not, let, let's not just let him hit us when he wants to. Make him fight us. If he's going to hit us, if he's going to knock us down, make him fight for it. Come on, Glenn, throw some punches in there. Don't say yes, yes to me no more, son. We can't win without punching. I know you are, but you can do better. Glenn, I see you to do it all. The right hand was there, but you stopped it. Take the punches from out in that room in there and bring him in here. Let's bring him here, son. I can hit him hard this round. We want this round. Come on, there's the knockdown, and as you say, a leaping yeah, left yes. uppercut. Anticipation of where he was going to hold his hands defensively, Roy shot the left uppercut. 
Round four begins. Roy Jones tremendously dominant in the first three rounds. Harold, what's the score? Okay, Jim. Three rounds to nothing. 30 to 26, Roy Jones Jr. Jimmy could have just as easily been another 10-8 round in his second round because Roy staggered himself badly. But so far, it's the old Roy Jones showing us all the tricks, the, the leaping shots, the step to the right, the bobbing and weaving, the feints. It's incredible. Roy Jones Jr. putting on a show. You heard Jeff Phoenix campaign between rounds to get Kelly to fight, a speech worthy of a Teddy Atlas, and Kelly actually landed a right hand on Jones's chin while Harold was giving us the score. <laughs> you know, J Roy is noticing the position of his hand, so instead of shooting a lot of straight right hands, Roy shooting a, a looping right hand, and later on you may see him change up and then start throwing the right hand right between the gloves. Or he may leap forward and throw the uppercut with the right hand yes, as opposed and, to the and, left. And, and that's why Kelly is going to have a rough time trying to figure out what Roy Jones is doing. This play. is what you ought to do against Jones. He pushes him against the ropes and bangs to the body. He's got to be very physical. See, what made Ike Abiyabuchi so successful when he fought Chris Bird, he did not fight an intelligent fight. He just kept throwing punches at Chris Bird from all angles. He didn't try to think. He didn't it, box with him. He didn't box. He just he didn't get Bird a chance to box him. He just went right at him. Kept punching. You have to be an animal, in other words, to something. That's right. <laughs> well, Kelly gave us about 20 seconds of it. There's some want to there. It's just that he's slow. He comes in, and even to the point where if he gets hit with a punch, sometimes he may appear to be staggered or go down. It's just because of such bad balance and coordination that he has. Roy throwing a jab. He'll spot the jab from time to time. Fight in a conventional style, as he did there. Hook right hand, stands down. He wasn't hurt at just that. Well, it's against bad balance and coordination on the part of Kelly that makes him up here to be hurt sometimes. Roy holding the right hand out there to invite Kelly to throw the jab oh, yes, so that he can counter over. Oh, yes, right, and Kelly is not going to throw the jab. What Roy could do would really make this a masterpiece if he could start jabbing more. That would relax Kelly a lot more, and then he could take him out with a much cleaner punch. Well, he's jabbing more in this round. The jab would relax him a little bit more. Jab him to the body, jab him to the head. Look to the body, shoot a right hand right on the chin. Not once tonight has Roy Jones indulged his worst in-the-ring habit, which is to back into corners on his own and allow the opponent to have at it. It was a South Beach nightclub named Level. Monday night, Roy Jones performing his brand new rap single, That Was Then, which now appears at number two on Billboard's Hot Rap Radio Airplay chart. A rather brilliant debut and a good sign for the possibility of big sales when the album, Round One, is released on Feb 26. Make him something to open him up. Stand in front of him, he's just waiting for a counter. They got him playing safe. Move left, move right. When he try to step to you, then get your combinations off. Okay? Try to make him commit himself. Let's we'll see how he likes it. Give me a... But then you've got to throw more than one more. Yeah. Oh, no, come on, mate. Just hey. respecting you, man. Dig for me, son. Dig for yourself, huh? Come on now, man. Dig for yourself, huh? I'm proud of you. Come on, mate. Get up, get up, Blue. Get up. Come back, Kevin. Emmanuel, you say Tommy Hearns would have given Roy Jones trouble. How? No doubt. Tommy Hearns had no problems with boxers. He had problems with maybe ballers, but Ray Leonard, Virgil Hill, Benitez, and him. Tommy was a master boxer. He would have been a big problem, I think, uh, just style-wise for Roy in his prime. Because of his length and his jab? His length, and he used his height very well. And then Tommy had that very sneaky right hand that he, you never saw. He was not necessarily a hard right hand puncher, but you never saw the right hand. He was one of the best guys that for deceiving the right hand. But he would have been a big problem. Who would have countered him? Well, it's really difficult. Roy hasn't had that much of a challenge, and a lot is because of the, the talent that he has and at the time that he, in the division. But I think that uh, Thomas would have been a big, big question. He, he, even Benita's one of the best counter punchers in the business. Could not counter Thomas Jones. Here we go. 
And you look at this blinding speed and natural instincts of Roy Jones, it would have been an amazing fight to have a song. Oh, Roy Jones and Sugar Ray Leonard. That would have been oh, Roy Jones and Bob and Hagler. Roy Jones and Sugar Ray Leonard at 160 or 154. At this weight, he'd have been too strong for, for Leonard. It would have had to have been Hearns up here. Yeah, but, but, but still, those guys had so much speed and talent that a lot of times they didn't really even matter to some degree. And they, they didn't necessarily use their weight all the time. They were just talented fighters. So if it were to take place at, let's say, 168, what would Jones Hopkins look like? From what I'm looking at right here, it would be a good fight because Hopkins didn't get to show well tonight because he fought a fighter who was very defensive-minded, southpaw, who had a good enough amateur background, which made him a little bit treacherous. And, and, and he couldn't really get in his mode. So I, I think we couldn't judge necessarily, you know, him on that. But still, Hopkins and Jones would be a good fight. Jones, if he fights like he's fighting now, may be a little bit too tricky, a little bit too more elusive for Hopkins. Because Hopkins throws punches, but he likes to throw his punches and then move in to bump you with his shoulders. And Roy being smart, taking the counter moves, moving back and forth, may be a problem. Speed would be a big factor. Is Jones faster than Hopkins? I think Jones is faster than Jones. But the Hopkins has turned out to be a solid fighter, and if the fight gets to be into a tough neighborhood, where Hopkins has been quite a few times, he may prevail, because Jones has never been in a tough fight still. We spend round five speaking in the hypothetical about other fights, because here versus Glenn Kelly, it's for the same. <laughs> Jones hot-shotting and tattooing Kelly for range with various shots from all different angles. If you missed the premiere, catch a replay of Real Sports with Brian Gumbel with the Super Bowl taking place tomorrow. What better time to look at sports books and gambling? We'll go behind the scenes to reveal the factors considered in setting the line for major sports events. Show for yourself. Somebody hit you. Well, you know, take the risk, man. You know, take the risk, man. Of course, he's hard to hit. We know what he is. But let me tell you something. Do you want to hit him? Do you want to hit him? Well, let's get closer to hit him. You get with the team. He's got team in his pocket, mate. Come over with the right hand. If you miss with the right hand, come back with the left hand. Put it together, son. You're not tired. Come on, Johnny. 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 More action from round five. Jones with a barrage of right hands after a leaping left hook to begin the action. I don't think Jeff Finnick is going to have a voice by about round ten. No, and pretty soon he may just jump in the ring and start fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you how to do it, Glenn. Yeah. Well, even that last exchange, it wasn't that Kelly was really hurt. He's just so clumsy and uncoordinated. setting him up for something. He's not going to shoot two lunging body shots like that. The sooner or later, he's setting him up for some trick shot somewhere else. Third shot, right hand to the bottom. Still looking straight at the chest. Yep, left hand to the bottom. I'm looking for a right hand over the top. <laughs> Fennec finally gets Kelly to throw a jab. Body, body from Jones, and there. That was a left it's hook. The he left hook. set him up on the chin. To me, seemingly, the idea of punch for Roy to land would be a left hook to the outside, purposely let, let him block that, which he will, and then shoot a straight right hand through the middle, which he hasn't thrown all night, and I think there's a good chance he could possibly knock out Kelly with that combination. But a left hook to the side and a fast right hand right through the middle. First time all night that Jones backed himself into the corner, but Kelly couldn't pin him there. But Kelly's just a little too slow. It's very hard to fight a guy who's defensive-minded almost 90% of the way. 
case you've just joined us, this is the second half of our unique Undisputed Champions doubleheader on HBO tonight. Earlier in Reading, Pennsylvania, Bernard Hopkins scored a 10th round technical knockout of Carl Daniels to retain his Undisputed Middleweight Championship. That was at the weight limit, of course, of 160. Now, at a weight limit of 175, Floyd Jones tries to defend his Undisputed Light Heavyweight Championship and is doing so with routine success against Glenn Kelly of Australia. And down goes Kelly on a body shot. Wicked body shot. Four, five, six, seven. Kelly's corner screaming Eight. at referee Go Max back. Parker Jr. Come that they thought the punch was low. I thought it was right on the... No, it was not low to my knowledge. It was a mistake. I thought it was, it was illegal. Was right on the bat line. And having hurt Kelly to the body, Jones comes back with two left hooks to the head. Kelly's guard is way low because Jones has hurt him badly to the body. And Kelly is not hurt. He just uncoordinated. Frustrated. Keep the punches up. Great, sir. Jeez. Green. Green. Let me see. Let's go out of the way. of blue. Let's go and give him some back up. Let's give him some back, Chin. Put him in that corner. Let's give him some back up. For you, brother. Come back for your own pride, huh? For your own pride, then? Go look for that shot now. You got somewhere else to go. Shorten your stuff up. Don't be so wide. All right, way to go. Give me some deep breath. Deep breath. Give me two. You know how hard train? Look at him. Trust me, he's tired of us. You're not even tired. You know why you're not tired? We're going to push ourselves. If we can, that's what. But when we walk out, we don't want to think. Here's the replay, Emmanuel. Yes. There's a right hand to the body. Yeah, I don't think that hurt him that much. And then here's the knockdown punch. Perfect shot. It didn't even hit the belt line, Harley, on the trunks too much. That hurt him, man. Good body shot. Oh, he was hurt there. But his physical side. They're, uh, they're wiping moisture out of Jones's corner. His physical size is what has enabled him to be able to absorb those punches. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim. Six to nothing, 60 to 52. Roy Jones Jr. Gave him an extra point for the knockdown in the sixth. Gave him an extra point for the knockdown in the third. Jim, in the sixth round, Roy Jones Jr. punked Glenn Kelly with about three or four real good left hooks to, to the body. And then when he finally threw that one that knocked him down, I mean, he had softened him up already because he had hit him so many times in the body. Roy Jones Jr. showed us every move of the book. I love that the way he wobbles that shoulder. Just keeps Glenn Kelly frozen. And he comes in with a hook and the, and the, and the uh, right hand over the top. You know, this is Roy Jones Jr.'s 24th appearance on HBO. That's more than any other fighter in the history of the network. Snapping a tie at 23, which was held with Oscar De La Hoya. And I'll bet you that in those 24 appearances, Roy has won 90 to 95 percent of the rounds scored by Harold Letterman. That's very impressive. Far more than any other fighter. He very seldom gets hit. That punch was low. That was low, but it wasn't dangerously low. You know, I've always wanted to see what would happen if Roy got into a real tough fight. And it's amazing he's had almost finished in his career without ever being in a fight where he had to really dig down. When you talk about how seldom he gets hit, he's the only fighter in CompuBox punch dad history to have gone an entire round without being hit by his opponent. <laughs> Benny Pazienza did not land a punch in the sixth round of their fight against each other. You know, I always say that regardless of what talent you have, it comes a fight sooner or later where your talent will not carry you there because of the style of the opponent or whatever. Shane Mosley like, learned that yeah, last yeah. Saturday night. Yeah. Again, once again, third knockdown of the night. Who never saw it. <laughs> you know, that's pretty amazing because between rounds, Alton Merkerson, Roy Jones' hand-picked trainer from Pensacola, him to go ahead and get the knockout and said we've got somewhere else to go i don't know where else they have to go but they can go now they can go perfect opponent good performance maybe roy's most proud pleasing performance in the past few years yes he did it and he needed it too so having watched bernard hopkins in pennsylvania and having been unimpressed I think we just
just did get you started, Roy. Yeah. Something got him started. Yeah. Go get that album, baby. February 26th, round one. Respect from the hood, baby. You know what I'm saying? Look out for the boy. Look up for the album. Hey. Larry isn't here to stop him from doing that. Yeah, Larry. Stop him from doing the yeah, Take a look at a replay of the knockout, Emmanuel. You tell us what happened. Roy was just getting in the mode of having a good time at this stage right here. And as I was saying earlier, this guy was surviving because he wasn't that aggressive. And once he started coming in and committed himself, Roy just took advantage of him, caught him with a nice counter punch. Well, Roy found the trick for knocking him out. He put his hands behind his back. He said, come on. You can't get any better than this. I hope the young fighters out here don't start trying to do that. Harold Letterman passes me a note and tells me that referee Max Parker Jr. was about to warn Roy Jones for grabbing the ropes. He never got a chance to issue the warning. Too late, Max. It's already done. Let's go up to Michael Buffer and find out at what moment Roy scored the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Max Parker Jr. reaches the count of 10 at 1 minute 55 seconds of round number 7. The winner by knockout victory and still the undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. box numbers and this will be a uh, Roy Jones wipeout landing 52 more punches than his opponent throwing 25 more more than doubling nearly tripling the landing percentage and power shots the heart of the Roy Jones attack 73 out of 139 53 percent in other words most of his misses were with the jab and let's uh, take a moment now to talk to the undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world. Roy, were you uh, more motivated than normal to please the crowd and provide some spectacle tonight? First of all, I gotta take time out to thank my Lord and Savior God for everything he did for me. Bless me to be here tonight. Bless me to finish my album up and bless me with the skills that I have to perform. Yes, I feel like I deserve to come out tonight and give the crowd what they're paying for because some guys seem to be forgetting and thinking that I'm a nice guy or something. I am nice, but I'm awful crucial with these hands. What's up, Pensacola in the house? What's up, Jersey, D.C., all my people all over the world, baby, Patterson, New York, everybody. What's up, people? Pensacola in the house, though. Roy, how much of your motivation tonight, if any, had to do with Shane Mosley's loss last week and Bernard Hopkins' appearance on this network earlier this evening? Uh, that had nothing to do with neither one of those. Uh, I take my head off to Shane because Shane fought a tough fight. Um, he did his thing. He tried. Uh, he'll come back and he'll do good things. Uh, but no Hopkins, no, but no Hopkins is still the same way. But no Hopkins, but no Hopkins needs Roy Jones to make a fight. Roy Jones don't need but no Hopkins. I can entertain with anything. I take what comes my way pound for pound. That man, 188 pounds tonight. I'm 182. But no, I don't want to mess with me, man. I'm trying to be nice about this. Then I beat him. What the hell? I got to spend a 50-50 with him for? He ain't never beat me. He ain't never beat nobody. He got one name on his record. Felix Trinidad. That's it. The other name on his record he got, he lost to. That ain't worth a damn to me. I don't want to hear that. He gonna give me 64. He ain't fight me. I'm pound for pound the baddest man throwing down. Fights faster than other fighters, talks faster than other fighters, too. Hello, Mario. You believed yesterday that Glenn Kelly was going to come out and try to jump in your face, get up on you, and rough you up. Instead, he seemed to want to stay back and away from you. Could the knockout have come earlier if he had been more aggressive? Yeah, if he came, on, if he came at me earlier, the knockout would have occurred earlier. But, man, admit the truth, Larry, I mean, Jim. Admit it, you know. I look five times better than a Bernard Hopkins and anybody else that you've seen in the last 12 years. Understand? I've been doing this. I ain't been up and fell off. I've been through the Lennox Lewis era, the Nassim Hamed era, the Sugar Shane Moses era, the Oscar De La Hoya era, Marco Antonio Barrera. I've been through all the eras, and I've still been here. Give me mine. Boy, Bernard when you Hopkins, fight like this, it's tough to argue the point. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the knockout. 
And and Harold Letterman says to me that the referee was on the verge of warning you for grabbing the ropes. I wasn't grabbing the ropes. I was chicken fighting. My way was behind my back. I was chicken fighting. I was the game rooster then. That's that chicken fighting stuff. You did that to make him come at you, right? I had to make him commit. He didn't want to commit, so I had to give him a chicken thing. I ain't looking for no ropes. That's a chicken wing. You know what I'm saying? Watch him. Come here. Don't do that. Huh? Come here now. Huh? Don't do that. Y'all must have forgot. Is that going to go on the highlight reel? You got to. Y'all hey. must have forgot? Y'all must have forgot. Go get that album, baby. February 26th, y'all must have forgot in stores. Do that for Roy J. All right, so off of your bitter discussion before the fight with Bernard Hopkins, uh, obviously you're making clear that a fight with Hopkins could only take place if you get the lion's share of the money, and he seems to be saying that ain't going to happen. Does that mean the fight ain't going to happen? That's what that means. That means I'm going to go to HBO Monday, to HBO to give me some money, let me go over to Germany and make this thing happen with Darius Mika Chester since he wants some. I also like to dedicate this fight to a friend of mine, uh, Ernest Prince Sr. He passed away while I was in training camp, so I couldn't be to the funeral, but, you know, we all had that happen sometime. I have to break, have to break to Jay, little girl. Yeah. Roy, you know, I enjoyed working with you as an expert commentator so much that I want you to. You want to narrate the Hopkins uh, highlights yeah, with me? Yeah, ready? Come on. Come all right. On. Give me the give me the highlight sheet here, Mike. You don't have it? I must have lost it. All right. Earlier this evening in Reading, Pennsylvania, Bernard Hopkins entered in his uh, executioner's mask to take on outmatched southpaw opponent Carl Daniels. And uh, this was a matter of Bernard wearing down Daniels largely with body shots throughout the fight. What did you think? Add to the fact that, add to the fact that Daniels ain't fought in 13 months. How does he get to be number one contender? He ain't even fought in 13 months. He got knocked out, I think, last time he fought when he fought Julio Cesar Vasquez. And Bernard Hopkins couldn't even knock him out. He got two middleweights that was knocking down Felix Trinidad inside four rounds. It took him 11 rounds to do it. He cannot beat me. Quit making him boost his head up. He want a payday. And he ain't been retired for Roy Jones. Roy Jones smart than that. What's up, Bigham? I told my dad. The only thing I'll say, he wouldn't think much of your opponent either. Well, he ain't got you. He was undefeated. It's better than his opponent. My opponent ain't had no loss on this record. He just got one. What's up, Tarver? Matter of fact, I might fight Antonio Tarver next because he deserves a shot. Quick because he's standing you know? nine feet away yeah, over there, right? right? That's right. I'll fight. <laughs> Antonio Tarver's an awfully big, light heavyweight. I don't give a damn. That was a big one I fought. Now, I don't give a damn. I, woo! Hey, one more thing. Before the seventh round, your trainer, Alton Merkerson, said, by God, go knock the man out. We got somewhere else to go. Where you got to go? Uh, I got some partying to go do with my friends in Miami. I got some new friends I'm in the South Beach. All fans of Roy Jones Jr., the cast from club level, the people that came out supporting me in my performance the other night. I got to go hang out with them. I'm Pitting invited too, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 part of the way is joining, you know what I'm saying? So going. <laughs> Thank you, RJ. Roy Jones, ain't nobody else like him. He's having a good time tonight. He did what he well, was supposed you, you to do You know, when he tonight. provides excitement in the ring, he gets excited about it, right? Yeah, he fought a good fight tonight. The guy was not a quality guy, but he did what he was supposed to do. He carried it to him. He was excited, and that happened. I, I was very impressed tonight, still. I was impressed, too. Let's take a look at our uh, website poll results and find out who would win a rematch between Roy Jones and Bernard Hopkins, according to those of you who voted at HBO.com slash boxing tonight. And here is the vote. 78% of you choosing Roy Jones, 22% saying that Bernard Hopkins would win the fight. Bernard, I mean, uh, <laughs> Emmanuel, who would win a rematch between Roy Jones and Bernard Hopkins? It's pretty tough, but what I can see right tonight, I think the edge would have to go to Roy because Roy still has so much of talent, he just has to get stimulated, and I think he was stimulated tonight. And I think fighting uh, Hopkins, which would be his toughest fight, but what is exciting about that, it may be the first time that we would have to see Roy have to dig down inside, and it would be one of those fights that he couldn't win just on his talent. I think he would have to dig inside to fight. It would be the first real fight that we would see him in, I believe. Love to see it. All right, stick right here because I need more from you in just a moment. Before we leave the air tonight, let's give you our own news report on the latest prospects for a Lennox Lewis-Mike Tyson heavyweight showdown in the wake of Tyson's license denial by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Plans are moving forward on various fights and a collect or fronts and a collective effort to preserve the possibility of the fight taking place under the existing contract among Lewis, Tyson, HBO, and Showtime. The one apparent possibility is for the event to take place in California, where reportedly the State Athletic Commission will schedule a hearing to consider a license for Tyson as early as next Saturday, February 9, and where officials at Staples Center in Los Angeles indicate that they would be interested in staging the fight, not on the original scheduled date of April 6, 
but as soon as April 20 or April 27. Meanwhile, officials in Texas and in Florida are also said to be interested in hosting Lewis Tyson if the California possibility fails to materialize.